Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a video on the Lens Baby Composer. Um, this is my favorite lens. Um, I shoot this lens 90% of the time. If you've used other Lens Babies or seen them, you can tell this one looks completely different. This is um, a brand new construction, brand new build, brand new design. Uh, first and most notably from the front, it's uh, got metal construction. And uh, it's not an accordion style, um, where you had to, the old ones you had to pull um, and push and move the optic around and had to use kind of a crazy grip. This one here is just a ball and socket. And all you do is move your sweet spot around and it'll stay pretty much in the place that you leave it. Um, there is a, a locking ring which you can tighten. Um, I keep mine a little bit tighter. It's not fully locked, but I keep it tight because I, I just think I can be more precise that way. Um, you can see here um, the metal construction for the mount. Locking ring is rubber, um, and it does have a focusing ring. Instead of having, once again, to pull it into focus, it has its own ring. The way that works is it moves the optic in and out on the uh, or in the body of the lens itself, which is fantastic compared to the uh, the pulling and the you know the other little ring they had on the 3G, a little more precise. Um, the green ring here, this is saying that I have the double glass optic installed. They have something called the optic swap system, which means that you have multiple types of lenses you can get for the inside of the, your composer. Uh, double glass is what it comes with standard. You can also get a single glass optic, which is the same style as the first lens baby, so the original lens baby. You can get a plastic uh, optic, which is like the Holga and Diana cameras. Uh, so you get some really cool, the way it kind of brings in the light and it's not always, you know, exact and it's just, it's just a really a fun lens. There's a lot of distortions. And then there's a pinhole and zone, zone plate, and that is probably one of my favorite kind of add-on lenses. Um, I don't have them out right now. I just moved, so they're still packed, but I, I want to do a separate video for those. And I'll go into those in a little more depth. Uh, without aperture rings installed, you're looking at an f2.0. Um, and it is using the aperture rings as before, but it has a little more variety. Um, starting with f2.8, goes to f4, f5.6, f8, f11, f16, and f22. Uh, f22 is obviously very hard to use because as soon as you put this in, that's what your aperture is. And if you're looking through your viewfinder, it's very, very dark. So it's, it can be hard to use. Um, if you're going to do um, landscapes, you can put it in after you line up the shot and then start taking some test shots until you get the uh, the focus right and you get the exposure right. Um, the uh, F16 is actually the one I use for uh, kind of going out and doing landscapes. I also like the F4, F5.6 for kind of products and kind of still life photography. And for macro, I actually like the F8. Um, I find the F8 is great for flowers. It, it gives you a good depth of field. Um, you're getting more of the flower in focus that way. So it's it's just great fun. If you get the macro kit, I recommend stand it, starting with the F8 and then kind of moving your way down to the uh, really shallow depth of fields. Um, there is a few things with Nikons um, that you should know. First of all, um, if you have a D80 or higher, I think the D70s might have had it as well, but basically the ones that have the built-in um, autofocus drive, make sure you turn it off before you mount the lens baby, otherwise it's not going to click into place correctly. If you have one of these and it's not clicking in or holding correctly, it's probably because you have your, AF, your sorry, AF turned on. So turn that off and you'll be able to line it up perfectly. Another thing with the Nikons is you will only be able to shoot manual. Uh, as a Canon user, you'll be able to use aperture priority, 
and with that what you do is you basically dial in what aperture you've put into the front of your lens baby and the incident light meter will kind of do the rest um, for the Nikon you don't have that feature um, as you can see there is absolutely no information for the aperture whatsoever and one of the kind of fun things, well the things I think is fun and kind of weird is that with the Nikon, I'm going to look to the viewfinder here you can see that your incident light meter is turned off there is no way to turn this on um, the only Nikons that you can use with your light meter is I believe the D300 and up so um, you get to become your own light meter which is a really good thing to learn uh, a couple of tips with that, shoot them raw um, that way in software later if you're half a step or a full step off of uh, the exposure you can use um, your raw editor to kind of fix that so it'll give you a good place to start and then eventually you're going to start seeing the light uh, exactly how it is and you're going to be able to set your shutter speeds right almost 90% of the time um, it does take some time to teach yourself to be a light meter but it is one of the best skills as a photographer you can have because then you're seeing the light, you understand the light before you even walk into a situation. You don't have to look at your camera to know where you should be as far as shutter speeds or apertures. So um, I recommend even for Canon users, uh, try doing it without your light meter because you're, you're going to take a lot better shots and you're going to you're going to learn to see the light, which is kind of really fun. And I thought that was one of the most fun things I could have ever learned with the lens baby itself. Of course, the lens baby is manual focus, so you will have to learn how to focus. Um, once again, a really good skill to learn, especially if you do any low-light photography with any other lenses. This is a good way to train yourself um, to focus. Also, doing like concert photography, the lens baby is a lot of fun. So you aren't losing anything by not having an autofocus system. Uh, I do have the macro kit to show you today. This is, I believe, the plus four. Um, if you do have these. Um, I recommend learning which one's which by just looking. This one I know is a plus 4 now that I've looked past my camera actually at it. The plus 10 has a little bit more of a curve to the um, to the to the filter itself, like the glass itself. And that's the plus 10. And this would be the plus 4. Any sweat and you wipe off this like the uh, the ink they used, they maybe should have laser engraved it, but they didn't, so it's fine. And basically what you would do is just kind of um, screw that on to the front there. Uh, kind of hard to do while I'm looking through a camera. There we go. And then what you can do is plus 4 gives you close-up. Plus 10 gives you starting of a macro uh, range. And then you can stack the two of them for a really, really close-up macro. Um, I think I forgot to show you how to set your apertures here. So I'll do that quickly. What you would do is just take the aperture ring you want. So if you never use lens baby this is what you're going to have to do every time you want to change your aperture. Is you just put it in there. Usually you drop it straight down in but uh, because I'm holding a camera can't quite do that. And you can see there's three magnets that caught that before it even touched the lens and it holds it in place. And to take it out all you do is touch your your holder for your apertures, this is usually where they're hiding. At the front is a magnet, and these are magnetic little strips. And so you just pull it out with that. And so that system actually works really well. Once again, it's another kind of fun, strange way that lens babies work. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave me a comment, and uh, I'll answer it as soon as I can. And also, um, I'll come out with another video with the other optic systems, the, the optic swap, and we'll have a little more fun with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next